color. I used to be intimidated by color. Not that I didn't use it at all, I did tend to draw a lot of black and white images just because it was simpler for me to do so. And then when I started screen printing, I relied really heavily on spot color. Spot color is when you print each color with premixed ink in a single run. So for red, use red ink. For sky blue, use sky blue. Here are all the inks in the screen printing studio I go to. Of course, you can make any color you like by mixing your own concoctions. And this is really different than when we print with a normal printer. I'm sure most of us have used CMYK, which stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. In this case, instead of using red ink, these four colors would mix to print the shade of red we want, or a whole spectrum of other shades. Silkscreen and Rizography both use spot color, unlike digital printers we might be used to using on the day-to-day. -day. Printing one color at a time. One layer at a time. When I first started screen printing, because I wasn't really used to overlapping colors, or I, I didn't know what result overlapping them would give me predictably, I would usually do like a dark outline and then fill in the other areas of the work with different colors, and I'd use spot color like this. But I really liked when other artists would overlap their shades and get these really interesting third shades. Eventually I did figure out how to make this process a little bit easier, and I want to share that with you guys. First, prepare your drawing tools. For me, that's an iPad and Procreate, and I also use my computer in Photoshop. But if you favor analog materials, maybe that's a light board. Maybe it's paper or even tracing paper. In this stage, we just want to visualize how our colors might overlap and where they're going to overlap. If you prefer to use digital tools like me, the multiply blending mode is your best friend. I can't describe how much I use this blending mode, and I love it because this is how we can see our colors blending on the screen and really visualize what they might look like. Second, test your colors. On a computer screen, color mixing is predictable. Every time I set multiply on this shade of blue and this shade of red, it's going to look the same. But in real life, when I print, my ink might act a little differently. If you're doing risography, however, the inks come straight out of the box and they also have predictable results. There are lots of color charts out there that show you what effect different colors have when they're layered on top of each other. But silkscreen ink is different. First of all, it's much more opaque, and that's a good thing. For a lot of the time when we're not trying to overlap our colors, and it's not necessarily supposed to show what's underneath. In a lot of designs, having opaque ink is ideal. However, if we want this specific effect where our inks are overlapping and we're getting this transparency effect, we might have to take matters into our own hands. Option one, we can use water-based fabric inks. Some of these are a lot more transparent. It really depends, so you still have to test your inks, but because they're water-based, they tend to be a little bit more watery, a little bit more see-through. They can also have a different texture though, maybe be a little bit shinier, not as matte, so again, good to test. Option two, we can add a transparent base to our acrylic inks. I like to use transparent bases like these ones. There are a lot out there, so 
whatever is available for you. I would recommend just trying it out. And uh, usually we would print the opaque layers first, dark layers first, and lighter and more transparent layers should go on top so they don't get covered up by the darker colors. It's test time. Even after I mix in my transparent base, I can only guess how the inks will really look together. And unless I have you know, been tracking this for a while, um, maybe you're very methodical and you wanna keep track of like exactly the percentage of transparent base to ink that you're using, not a bad idea. I, can, I can't really predict how colors are gonna look on top of each other. So this is when I will grab some scrap paper and print some overlapping rectangles. Make sure you label your work. And now you can consider the different options before you start printing. Finally, print time. Okay, the more colors, the more complex your print will be. Here are a couple of examples from my own prints this week. So you can kind of see the process. So first of all, I printed with slightly more opaque inks. And so this gives a less dramatic effect. The colors are a little softer and they kind of blend together a bit more. They're less harsh. On the other hand, I printed with more transparent colors. And you can especially see that in these areas where like the blue goes on top of the yellow or on top of the magenta. It's uh, pretty dramatic compared to the other print. And now you have a finished print. I've definitely learned the most from just trying stuff and seeing how it works out and having that test phase where you're kind of printing the colors as rectangles and seeing how they interact before you spend time printing your image is really helpful. So take your time and you'll learn the most from your own experimentations and color combinations. Happy printing! For more behind the scenes art content, digital brushes, textures, and updates from me, join me on Patreon. The link is right here.